in terms of the cooking stuff, they have basically fake traditional values because very few younger Ukrainian women will say under 30 can cook as well as an Italian guy, judged by how well my Italian male friends cook. And I'd probably rather invite them over to cook. Experience. Welcome back to another episode of the Valka Valka with me, Connor Klein. And in today's episode, it's going to be a continuation of a video that I did last week where I focused on MGTOW, men going their own way, and some of their views about dating here in Eastern Europe, some countries like Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus. Now, in last week's video, I dealt primarily with the marriage rate and divorce because actually this region is basically the highest region in the world for divorce <laughs> and it's obviously a region well not obviously maybe to to you but for sure it's a region that doesn't have radical feminism at all and relative to the west women are less feminist but the divorce rate and the initiation of divorce by women is actually higher here so i, I took out that part of it and I made a separate video last week, so definitely go and check it out uh, up above in a card or down below in the description after this one if you're curious about the actual divorce issue. In today's video, we're gonna be diving into some of the other points that come up made by many uh, red pill philosophers out there, especially those who are MGTOW, which is a subset of red pill philosophy. Now, I don't disagree with everything that red pill red pillars or red pill philosophy says about the nature of dating between men and women. I actually agree with a lot of it, but there are a lot of myths and misconceptions that many, uh, especially MGTOW, so this is the subset men going their own way, so these are guys who renounce all permanent or long-term relationships with women uh, because, primarily because of feminism in the West as they see it. So one of their basic tenets is that because of feminism and female emancipation in the West, so they start off with the first wave of feminism getting the right to vote, then the right to run for public office, right to work, uh, and that progressed over a century up to when they have reproductive rights and so on and so forth. Now we see radical feminism uh, gaining ground in many uh, Western European countries and also of course in North America. And basically they say that all of this feminism from the beginning basically has led to this situation where feminism has destroyed um, traditional relationships between men and women. Well, you could say the tradition always, unless it's maintained, dies out. So in this video, I want to dive into a couple more of where I myths or mistakes I think they make when they analyze here, because many MIG towers, I guess you can call them, they think that they are the, these unicorns here in Eastern Europe. Uh, many of them use that word for these women who have these traditional values and I have of course many vodcasts where we bring up this topic of traditional values whether really, really traditional I'll go into it a little bit again but if you want a more in-depth analysis then of course I have another vodcast so I'll link it up below in the card and down below in the description so you can watch that after this one. So how does MGTOW or men going their own way see Eastern Europe and women? Basically I think I actually read this recently somewhere they think that if you come here the women are going to have the values of your grandma with the looks of a supermodel. Now, there are many women here, of course, who are beautiful, and I would say that in general, you're gonna see at least three times as many beautiful women walking around on the streets of a city like Odessa. I'm just here by the port. We've got a beautiful sunset here. It's actually, by the way, it's an Indian summer. We're at the end of September, 26 degrees Celsius. Boom, that's, uh, that's another reason to be interested in Eastern Europe is the weather in the south of Ukraine at this time of year. and you will see the streets, just so many bombshells. That's the only bombshells I like to equip that you see here. Just really, there's a high concentration of beautiful women. Now, if you were to follow along the train of thought of guys who follow red philosophy, then feminism, as we've seen in the West, uh, whether that be just more traditional feminism or more radical feminism, uh, that has destroyed the women and their values here. So basically the women here in Eastern Europe, because they haven't been uh, afflicted by uh, feminism, they are basically all cooking and cleaning and, um, I don't know, looking after a man, staying at home, being these loyal 1950s kind of trophy wives, because of course they look stunning and then they behave like the values of your grandmother, like a babushka, as we'd say here in a Russian or 
babusa in Ukrainian. Now, I always love to joke that in terms of the cooking stuff, they have basically baked traditional values because very few younger Ukrainian women will say under 30 can cook as well as an Italian guy, judged by how well my Italian male friends cook. And I'd probably rather invite them over to cook. Now, I'm not saying, of course, that no Ukrainian girls can cook in the country, but basically if you come with that stereotype, then it doesn't really hold true. And one of the reasons for that is women here, our younger women here, grew up on a steady diet of narcissism from things like Instagram where they can post photos and get lots of cheap validation from the horny hordes of foreign guys who don't necessarily ever come here to Odessa but are just online giving them lots of validation. That idea that they're all sitting at home looking for the good man to look after and start cleaning and cooking from the house, uh, it's extremely rare. And as I said, they don't have radical feminism here. It's basically non-existent, nor do they really have that much feminism will say early for I think like demanding equal rights like things like real equal pay for equal work not what you see with radical feminists in the West where they want uh, equity which is um, equal pay for not necessarily equal work they just want to feel entitled to it you don't have these things here but at the same time you also don't have this stereotype a stereotypical uh, reality in terms of women just wanting to stay at home and do the cooking and cleaning now don't get me wrong, definitely uh, in my experience, and I've been talking to lots of women here and seen it with my own eyes, I think in general women in Eastern Europe are more likely to prioritize things like looking after a child over maybe pursuing a career in those early years of child rearing. I think that is a difference, but beyond that, I certainly don't see a huge difference in that between the two regions. So just taking a step back and going back to the looks, because I did mention just how many beautiful women there are here in Eastern Europe definitely and this is a, to a certain extent connected with feminism in the west and fat promotion or they like to call it fat acceptance but fine there are very few obese um, people under the age of say 30 and definitely very few overweight women under the age of 30 35 and definitely single women in general are just slim here and definitely having gone back to ireland where i grew up uh, and i remember ireland used to have the slimmest people in Western Europe and when I go back today I am pretty dismayed and shocked when I see the level of obesity or overweightness amongst women under the age of 30. It's just striking straight away that you see so many women who are bigger uh, and that's extremely unhealthy and obviously biologically that is just unattractive to men. So for sure this part of it definitely holds true, part that there are likely to be women maybe with the looks of a supermodel a lot more than you're going to see in the west but they definitely do not in general have the values of your grandma in fact if you ask them to cook a borscht it's probable they would need to call their grandma call their babushka in order to be able to cook it up and impress you another thing that comes up is about the femininity of women here in eastern europe that they obviously well obviously obviously but definitely they uh, put a higher priority on their appearance, I think, in general than you're going to see in Western Europe overall or in North America. But does that mean that that is necessarily a good thing? Is that really? Because it seems to me that a lot of MGTOW or Red Pill guys that they are dreaming of this combination, of course, as I said, with the looks of the supermodel, with the values of the grandma, uh, and also someone, a woman who is hyper feminine. But hyper feminine women, in my experience, tend to be extremely emotional and unstable. So I'm not really sure that a lot of red pillars have actually really encountered this combination and actually know would they be able to even handle it. It's definitely, believe me, not the dream because they seem to want women that are going to be docile and this kind of 1950s Stepford wife, but those women are not going to be hyper uh, feminine in that sense. So again, I think this is something that, yeah, they are definitely more, we'll say, feminine in the sense that they put more priority on their 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 appearance and their looks in general than you're going to see in the west but also uh and this is maybe going against what the stereotype is because obviously Eastern europeans a lot of people haven't traveled here think that they're very stern and un emotionless uh or sorry unemotionless that's a, <laughs> just made up that word they're emotionless uh than you're going to see in the west but actually if you're here in the south of ukraine uh, i always think uh, 
they're, they're pretty close to being like Italians half the time and Latinos, they are uber passionate and melodramatic. Uh, so again, that is just not the way it is if you come here. And remember that Odessa, Ukraine is one of those cities that is marketed in that sense uh, with these traditional values or fake traditional values, or even I call them princess values, what you have in reality, but they market these traditional 1950s step for wife values here along with the looks of a supermodel and um, believe me they are super melodramatic in general in this part of the world so if we are going to come here to a city like Odessa in Ukraine or maybe going to go to Russia or to Belarus and just surmising if you're listening to the advertising of those disingenuous marriage agencies uh, you need to be really really careful because that is not what you're going to find here when you come uh, to a city like Odessa Mama or Eastern Europe. What is very likely to happen, and this is something that I dealt with a little bit in the, in the other video about divorce and stuff, and maybe getting us called divorce raped, like uh, a woman taking a lot of your property or demanding a lot of alimony if you have children or you, without children afterwards, is that here, uh, if you come with that frame that a lot of these marriage agents try to um, basically market to you being this provider because the women here want to be saved by a white knight uh, who's going to come in and fly them off to America. Uh, you will get fleeced well before the wedding or the marriage. <laughs> you won't need to worry about a divorce because you're going to be penniless before then because uh, scamming and ripping off men or using it for money is uber common amongst uh, Ukrainians, well Ukrainian scammers and even we'll say uh, that continuum from scammer into just gold digger it is super common here so definitely this is something that I don't know MGTOW and Red Pillar seems to leave out completely is the fact that they don't even need to get married or rely on family law in order if they are that way inclined because they can basically fleece an easy victim before they have to walk down the aisle in order to achieve that so I think that should be a word of warning if you are coming here just to be really careful because a lot of their red pill MGTOW guys that I see comment on this region it doesn't seem like they really understand what is going on and how careful you need to be and basically what a lot of these disingenuous say um, marriage agencies or romance tours are setting guys up for is to be a simp and that is the last thing you want to be here in Eastern Europe and to a certain extent can you really blame the scammers well I think we can blame the scammers because they're just dis downright dishonest and criminal but say maybe the more gold digging type that maybe it's easy to market western men to to these disingenuous marketing uh, marriage agencies this isn't uh, to market to these disingenuous marriage agencies here because if you're willing to be a simp which is basically just pedestalizing women uh, and basically buying them everything setting no boundaries and really not being assertive and letting them dominate you and basically take advantage of you what do you think will happen women here will treat you like a simp so definitely for if there were no simps in the world there would be no gold diggers and that I think is something that's really left out of a lot of what I see online when guys who are in this kind of MGTOW men going their own way um, subset of Red Pill philosophy so they leave out these big big two differences that between the West and say the East of Europe is that in the West you don't need to worry so much about being fleeced uh, on a date and being scammed out of your money and number two they don't look at the behavior of the guys who come here with that mentality that I'm here as a white knight to save those oppressed women of Eastern Europe who only just want to be 1950 separate wives and live in America with a man who gives them everything if you come with that mentality you're going to be easy picking so don't fall into that trap and definitely don't come here believing that there are unicorns in that sense now let me be clear the majority of Eastern European women they are not gold diggers right they are not gold diggers they actually do want uh, to meet someone and actually have a genuine connection and a relationship that they do still expect men overall to be the, the breadwinner or to be the guy who brings in probably the most finances it's not exclusive that way but uh, so it's a little bit more we'll say traditional but it's not a massive difference in that sense and now I have a dog behind me so in sum don't buy into the MGTOW narrative that this because there's no feminism or very little feminism that's some sort of paradise lost gold diggers 
are only as loyal as their options. So if that's what you end up attracting, just be very cognizant. But now I'm saying if you, if you want to date a gold digger, you're just cool with that because you understand that that's what's going on. She's there for the money. She doesn't want a genuine relationship with me. She wants it with my bank account. Then your decision, do it in full knowledge. It's your, it's your life. But don't be a simp. Simps believe that the woman is with them because she loves them. Yes. And it's rather sad. So I should have started an anti-simp forum or something, an anti-simp campaign in here in Eastern Europe. That is my overview of what I think the main mistakes made by MIG Tower, how they misrepresent how things are here in Eastern Europe for guys are coming over. And it can be a little bit dangerous if you fall into that mentality, as I've said. Uh, definitely check out the other video if you're interested in why they have such high divorce rates here in Eastern Europe, if they're also traditional. Uh, did that one last week. And actually, I'm going to review a video by a big red pill YouTuber next week or the week after. <clears throat> and in that one, I'm going to break it down one by one because he goes into just preparing a huge number of myths about coming and living here in Eastern Europe. So you got that to look forward to. If you are interested in working yourself and developing yourself and not falling into, I should call it the simp trap coming here in Eastern Europe, then I actually finished up my Slavic Seduction Secrets Bootcamp where we dived into how to uh, attract the real, genuine, beautiful women here of Eastern Europe. Uh, and we have, in that course, uh, with the participants, I went into things like the gold digger trap, of course, if you're trying to avoid a gold digger, how to test if a woman that you are dating is a good fit for you for a long-term relationship, how to organize the perfect date, uh, lots, lots more in terms of how to attract and lead here and actually be high value to the women when you come to Eastern Europe. So you can find your dream woman, I guess, if you're looking for more than one, but whatever rocks your boat. Now that is closed for enrollment because I only open it up um, maybe once, maybe we might open up twice a year. We'll see in the future for enrollment to get in on that. But you will be notified if you are on my free mailing list. It's completely free. And I'll put a link down below as always, uh, as I have been not always, but at least over the last few couple of months, I've been putting that link down below. Type in your email address, confirm that it's real. And as a free thank you, you'll get my checklist. Five biggest mistakes made by Western men when they come here to date Eastern European women. You heard a, a little bit of it already in this video, some of the big mistakes that some of them are making if they come without simp mindset for sure, or if they just think that it's some sort of lost land of the, I don't know, some sort of lost utopia in that sense. Uh, it is a kind of utopia if you know what you're doing. So definitely uh, make sure that you're on the list if you're in any way interested in developing yourself when you come here. So as you can probably see by the light on my face, it is time to wrap up this video. Just seen the sun set over there on the other side of the port here in Odessa. Another fantastic evening. Um, I'm gonna stay in Odessa as long as we have this kind of weather. Definitely in the south of Ukraine, maybe we're gonna take a trip around. Uh, so definitely check out, keep a lookout for a new vlog sometime soon. I might go to another city down here in the south of Ukraine that I haven't featured before. Uh, I'm starting to ramble on because it's at the end of another Vodka Vodkas with me. See you very soon in the next video. Do streci, desvedania, do pobacina from Odessa, Ukraine. Sar Experience.